everybody, this is the Pocket Passer. I'm your host, Randy White. I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. I know I am. I know I took a couple days off. I just finished up editing the last of my video with Jacob and Cole. But today, I'm bringing my official AFC East record predictions to you. I know I broke it down kind of with Cole and Jacob when we did our AFC playoff picture, NFC playoff picture coming out. By the time you see this video, it will be out. So... Today, I just kind of want to talk about a few teams, one in the AFC, one in the NFC, each in the North, uh, that I think people are sleeping on a little bit, one of which I picked to make the playoffs and the other I didn't pick, but I said, look out, this team could easily surprise you. And then I'm going to get to my AFC East record predictions and playoff predictions. So starting off, don't count the Packers out. I know it looks like there's a little bit of bias, and by the way, not a Michigan State fan. This is a signed Jaden Reed helmet. Jaden Reed, rookie wide receiver for the Packers, playing pretty well in preseason. He just caught a touchdown pass in the preseason game against the Patriots. So, you know, I bought this from a friend of mine who bought it. And uh, shout out to Connor Rise. He's been on the show. He came on the show before the draft, and we talked about kind of, you know, pre draft expectations. But I'm optimistic about this guy. So I thought, hey, might as well buy his helmet. So signed Jaden Reed helmet. So that's what this is. I'm not a Michigan State fan. I am an Ohio State Buckeye fan. So to get to the Packers, I think what you got to look at with Green Bay is everyone is expecting Green Bay to be bad to mediocre. And honestly, that's I picked them to go 8-9, and nine, so I'm kind of in that boat. But if we're being real here, Green Bay does not have a lot of holes. Not really at all. I mean, if you look at their offensive line, they've got a solid offensive line, especially the left side, but the entire line is developing nicely. David Bakhtiari is a premier left tackle when healthy. Everyone expects him to be healthy this year. Elton Jenkins, a solid guard. Josh Myers, center. Zach Tom is progressing at tackle. Uh, so there's some good looks there. I mean, very encouraging young talent. Everyone wants to talk about just Christian Watson. But if you remember, Romeo Dubs was balling a little bit. He led the league in, he led the, not the league, the team in targets and catches prior to his injury that knocked him out of a few games. And he wasn't the same after that. But the Love and Dubs connection is very real. Expect that to be a real thing this year. I would not even be shocked if Dubs led the team in most major receiving categories despite Christian Watson's uh, just overall physical dominance. I mean, he's a just an unbelievable athlete. And what he did in the back half of last year was truly incredible, starting with that Cowboys game that I thankfully was present to uh, witness. That was an awesome experience. But I'm not just saying this as a fan of Green Bay, because I think I'm a very realistic um, viewer of the game. And if the Green Bay Packers were genuinely going to be a dumpster fire because they didn't have a roster around Jordan Love, I wouldn't pretend like Jordan Love was going to come out and carry us to the playoffs. But I don't think that's the situation at all. Offensively, you've got a very good play caller, Matt LaFleur, and a good leader, a good head coach. You know, you got very talented young wide receivers that could potentially develop into quality, explosive uh, and just very productive pieces. Two very good running backs, one powerful, one elusive, and is a good receiving back as well. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, a nice one-two punch. Um, young tight ends that have shown a ton of promise. Guys in camp comparing Musgrave to Travis Kelsey. Now, obviously, I'm not going to try and compare him to Travis Kelsey. I think that would be insane. I think I would lose the respect of the viewers and, frankly, the respect of myself if I were to compare some random rookie tight end that Green Bay drafted, Travis Kelsey, and then if he comes out and doesn't do anything uh, for Green Bay to start, obviously, I would look like a moron. And I'm not about to just throw that out there. I'm just saying his teammates and what I'm hearing from camp is a ton of positivity around his ability, his speed and athleticism as well as just his ability to find spots and zones and get open. So that's very encouraging stuff I've heard out of camp. There's been mixed stuff on Jordan Love. Some people have been critical of him, while others have been wildly optimistic. There's been highs and lows in terms of how they view him. Obviously, the defense has won a lot of training camp reps from what I've seen and what I've heard about. 
And, I mean, they have a very good defense. Rashawn Gary is an excellent pass rusher. Kenny Clark, another quality pass rusher on the inside. Preston Smith is still good on the other side. And then you get Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker in the middle. Devondre Campbell, a very good leader of that defense. Quay Walker, very undisciplined last year, but he's an athlete. If he can kind of button up the crucial mistakes he made last year, he could be a very good player. Jair Alexander is a top three corner, top four minimum if you want to get picky. But he's a very, very good corner. Uh, he had an excellent season last year. He's going to continue to have just elite production at the corner position. You saw what he was able to do to Justin Jefferson when they matched him up on him, man on man. And yes, I know, they double covered Justin Jefferson for a good chunk of that game. It doesn't change the fact that Jair was incredibly effective on Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in football. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic if you're a Green Bay Packer fan. And not to mention, Jordan Love, he got to learn behind Aaron Rodgers and watch two MVP seasons produced by Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if there's a better situation to learn than that. And obviously, we've seen Aaron Rodgers isn't the stingy old, uh, aloof, grumpy old grouch that he was depicted to be. Yeah. What's up, little bitch, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? You look fat as shit. You said 260. No, I did not. Yes. We said 260. No, so he's been very positive, and he's been very supportive of Jordan Love, both publicly. Uh, well, I mean, we only know publicly, but it's been suggested and reported that it's been the same thing privately, obviously. He said he texted Jordan Love before the official started training camp and getting to see the way he functions with his teammates and his friends in hard knocks has, I think, shown a uh, nice light on who he is as a person and the kind of locker room guy he is. Uh, so hopefully this kind of negative stigma built around the guy starts to dissipate as he's actually been put out in the public eye. There's been less and less things to nitpick about him because there really isn't much to nitpick about him. And with that in mind, Green Bay's a very young team with a lot of inexperience. Expect them to have some growing pains. They're not going to be great to open the season. If they are, look out, because they'll probably make the playoffs if they start off fast. But this is a team that I expect to kind of show productivity and effectiveness heading towards Thanksgiving when they find their productivity. I mean, that's when you look at a football team and you go, okay, what does this NFL team stand for? Normally, you figure that kind of thing out sometime around Thanksgiving and beyond. If they haven't figured it out by Thanksgiving, that's a team that's not making the playoffs and they're not going to be a great football team, at least this year. But if they can put things together and provide a productive offense to go along with a defense that has high hopes and high expectations, then they can be a dangerous football team. Do not count them out. Not to win the Super Bowl, all right? I'm not, I'm not overreacting. Jordan Love has looked good. The offenses look good. The receivers have progressed. They've got nice pieces all over the defense and all over the offense. They just need to put it together. Let's see if the defensive scheme doesn't play 10 yards off on the outside on corners on third and two. If they do that again, they're not going to win football games. So hopefully, better defensive scheme this year. No! No. with the same defensive coordinator so we're just gonna have to wait and see green bay is one of those teams that's really a wait and see because they don't have any true clear glaring holes they just have question marks man and with question marks you just gotta play freaking football when you play football you figure out what those question marks are and you figure out if they're exclamation points or if they're uh i don't know a frowny face emoji i can't find a good punctuation analogy hey pal you just blowing from stupid town but you get the point. You just got to play football. So let's see what Green Bay does when week one kicks off. And just let them play football. Because right now, it's a whole lot of Monday morning quarterback. Oh, Jordan Love's going to be bad. Jordan Love's going to be good. I mean, whatever side you're on, you don't know. It's, it's a question mark. The only way to answer those is to just go out and play football. So be patient. The season's right around the corner. And when it gets here... Enjoy it. Let me segue to this. Uh, Hard Knocks has come out, and it's the Jets. Aaron Rodgers was pretty grumpy about it being the Jets. He said uh, it was forced down their throats. You what? Um, he didn't seem overly, 
I guess, positive about being forced to do Hard Knocks. I watched the first two episodes that were released. It was a great watch, like I said. He really wasn't depicted as the grouch that people tend to think he is. He seemed like a good dude in that. Um, obviously, what's shown on a reality television series isn't always real. It'd be silly and naive of me to think that because Aaron Rodgers seems cool in that, that automatically means he's a great dude. But point being, there really isn't any strong evidence to suggest otherwise. Overall, though, aside from the whole Aaron Rodgers personality thing, which has been a talking point that I have attacked because, uh, I guess, sentimental reasons, Aaron Rodgers is the reason I got into football, started playing football, now coach football. Um, he's what made me fall in love with the sport back in 2016 when I started watching the sport avidly, and that was my favorite year watching football, watching them go on that six-game win streak to end the regular season, beat the Giants in a blowout, and then beat the Cowboys on a clutch last-second field goal, thanks to a huge throw to Jared Cook on the sideline. Those are the kind of things that made me fall in love with the game of football. Um, so there's definitely some sentimental value there. But I try to be, I think, as um, logistical and rational as possible. I try not to let bias get in the way of my opinion. So just looking at it from an objective eye, the Jets' offensive line is a big concern. Other than that, they look good. We know Brees Hall is going to be good. They just signed J uh, Dalvin Cook, who I think still has some gas in the tank. Garrett Wilson's an excellent young wide receiver who's going to continue to progress. And defensively, well, the defense speaks for itself. I mean, you watched them last year. We'll continue to watch them. The defense is fantastic. So there's no question marks there. The Jets, it's going to come down to, as Robert Sala said, we go where you guys can take us. And obviously talking about the Jets' offensive line there, you got to win the line of scrimmage if you want to win football games. It's as simple as that. And if they can't do that, they're not going to win football games. But if they can do that, then, um, well, we can segue into AFC East record predictions. I have them winning the division and going 12-5. and five. That's a hot take. Uh, it's, I mean, I like a lot of teams in that division. You know, I, I love the Bills. I love the Dolphins. I love the Jets. I love Josh Allen. Tua gets a lot of unnecessary hate that makes me want to root for him. Mike McDaniel is freaking hilarious. I love watching Mike McDaniel just, I don't know, do whatever weird crap he does and says on the sideline and in interviews. He's just he just seems like a fun dude and he's been he's done an excellent job coaching too. I mean getting them to the playoffs his first year there. I expect them to be better this year, bringing on Vic Vangio at defensive coordinator. The Dolphins are poised for success. But I had the Jets winning the division at twelve and five. They've got a rough start to the division. I think if they can stay afloat and go three and three the first six games of the season, the back half of that schedule, or not even the back half, the back two thirds of that schedule lighten up immensely. So if they can get through those first six weeks at a three and three, you're looking at a twelve win football team in my opinion. I think they go twelve and five, win the division, and then right behind them, Dolphins and Bills. I have the Dolphins going second at eleven and six and the Bills going third also at eleven and six. I think the Bills do better against every other team in the NFL, but watching the way the Dolphins played against the Bills in that playoff game and how they've improved bringing on Jalen Ramsey, something tells me the Dolphins sweep the Bills. That's just, that's the vibe I get from the Dolphins. I talked about it with Jacob and Cole. When they're on here, I get a strong vibe in the division. However, if I think the Dolphins play a team like the Bills or the Jets in the playoffs, I think one of those teams knocks them out. To me, the Dolphins are a five-seed playoff team, and I think the Bills are a six-seed playoff team. And those are very interchangeable. Like I said, I have them going the same record if the Bills snatch one of those games against the Dolphins, the Bills probably finish second. But I'm honestly just putting all my chips in on the Dolphins, sweeping the Buffalo Bills this year, something that has not happened in a long time. Josh Allen has owned the Miami Dolphins, but I just have a vibe about the way that season ended. Sometimes a team gets rolling and another team kind of enters a slump. And... Honestly, I think the Dolphins sweeping the Bills would be good for the Bills because you watch the Bills, they're capable of going what I like to call scorched earth mode, and they like to do that kind of in the beginning third of the season, beginning half of the season, where they just bludgeon everybody they play. But if they can hit that stride late in the season, they're, I mean, 
they're Super Bowl favorites bar none. But right now, they keep getting hot early in seasons, and then they fizzle out once they play a good team like the Bengals or the Chiefs in the playoffs, and they just don't have the same fire. If they can hit their stride uh, late in a season, good luck beating them. So, I mean, Von Miller is going to be back late season next year. Micah Hyde's going to be healthy. Jordan Poyer is going to be healthy. This is going to be a team that was brutalized by injury last year. They're going to be healthy. Josh Allen's going to be fully healthy. So still watch out for the Buffalo Bills. And I think them not winning the division could be very good for motivating them. I think, honestly, they have a better chance to win the Super Bowl this year than any year prior. That's my take on it. The Bengals are weaker this year than they have been in previous years. And, I mean, the Chiefs could pull a New England Patriots and just keep it up. But that's tough for any NFL football team to do. I mean, the Patriots are the only team we've seen do it. Besides the 49ers uh, several decades ago, the Patriots are the only team we've seen in the last two decades just keep punching their way into the big game. It doesn't happen, but if Kansas City can prove me wrong, I mean, they should be Super Bowl favorites. They should be. But to me, Buffalo's right there. And the Jets, if they can show that the offensive line is reliable, they're right there. And the Dolphins, they can protect Tua, and Tua can keep a clear head and a healthy head. They're right there. I mean, you're talking three AFC East teams that can easily be in co uh, contention uh, if their offensive line performs well. That's really the concern with all three of those teams. Stephen A. Smith came out saying that Stefan Diggs wants out of Buffalo. Stefan Diggs immediately cleared it up, saying how he loves Josh Allen, loves the Bills, and wants no part of leaving the Bills. Which side is right? It's tough to say. Obviously, Stefan Diggs is going to kind of do the PR move and come out and say everything's fine. We've seen kind of some disgruntlement in there, but to me, I can't fathom Stefan Diggs wanting to leave Buffalo. He's in a perfect situation right there in Buffalo. Aside from the fact that the division is tough, there's not many quarterbacks I'd rather have throw the football today. I'm not sure there's a single quarterback. I mean, Mahomes, that's it, really. I mean, Maybe Burrow, but those, I mean, Josh Allen's a top three quarterback, and it's not debatable. I don't care what Jacob and Cole tried to tell you last week. It's not debatable. Josh Allen's a top three quarterback, and frankly, Burrow, Mahomes, and Allen are in a league of their own ahead of everybody else. There's not a single other quarterback in the NFL that has proven they're on the level of those three guys, so I'm sick of any nonsense that says otherwise. It's just the truth. It's an objective fact. It's fact as far as I'm concerned. You can't convince me otherwise. I mean, just turn on the tape and watch them. Watch them. It's that simple. Watch their team play around them. There's not a team that performs better than those three guys when they're on the field. It's that simple. So, to cap off the AFC East, I know I said when I did AFC North that there has to be a team finishing below 500. i I'm going to break my rule. I think the New England Patriots go 9-8. and eight. Bill O'Brien's an upgraded offensive coordinator. Mac Jones is good, but he's easily the worst quarterback in the division. They have the worst weapons in the division. Uh, they have a not great offensive line. Their defense might be the weakest in, division, in the division, despite being coached up by Bill Belichick, who's, of course, a defensive mastermind that poses a problem to any offense. But, I mean, this is just a tough, tough division. Honestly... The Patriots are a playoff team if you put them in a division like the AFC South or the NFC South. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. Or I guess that's it. Uh, NFC North probably. But, I mean, there's three divisions in football where the Patriots compete for a playoff spot. But they're in probably the best division in football with three of the top ten quarterbacks in the NFL. It's going to be tough to get out of there alive. It really is. So... I mean, Patriots, to me, we talked about it last week. As Jacob and Cole both said, they're the doormat of the division. And it's a really strange thing to say after 20 years of dominance. But they are indeed, right at this moment, the doormat of this division. And I will add, don't be shocked to see one of the three teams I named making the playoffs in the AFC fall flat on their face and somehow have a losing record. If I were to pick a team to do that, it would be the Dolphins because they have the worst quarterback out of the out of those three teams. And the Dolphins can't really win football games if two is not healthy. But to me, they're all three playoff teams. Obviously, be prepared for a shock 
the NFL is perfectly capable of throwing a curveball at you. And if it was a team, I would pick the Dolphins to miss the playoffs. But I think all the, all three of these teams are just – I think they're too good. They're too good to miss the playoffs, so they should be in there. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video you want to see more content, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm trying to get clips of my videos out there to you guys. Uh, and a special announcement by popular demand from the 8th grade football team. I coach. I will be bringing back Madden YouTube videos. So those will be coming soon. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next video.